Today on Adventures with Peps, we learn all about the technical judges who run, upgrade, and maintain all aspects of the judges' equipment. We are going to be painting the figure by Warlord Games, so I hope you join in, have fun, and if you learn something, make sure you like, subscribe, and send me some love. Now, sadly, this model has sat on my shelf for way too long. I gave it a black prime and a very light dusting of... I think grey, back in the day. Uh, that was before I started using the army speed paints and contrast paints. So I need to brighten this up a little bit. So we're going to start off with the Citadel Miniatures base coat of uh, Ceramite White. We're just going to lighten up the model. Got to make sure anything that I want yellow gets a good solid coat. And I'm pretty much going to hit up everything. Maybe leave his dark blue bodysuit alone. But anything that's going to be green and yellow, I need to make sure it gets a good white hit on it. Right, the final touches of white are now going down. As you can see, I haven't gone too heavy with the white. But we got a very good coverage on nearly everything. It goes a very light grey once it starts drying, but that should be good enough to get the brightness that I need on those areas. Up next is going to be Cloud Burst Blue, the Army Painter Speed Paint. I am using this on the bodysuit. Now the tech judges are covered in technical gear, as you could well imagine. So this is a little bit fiddly. I'm not using my usual shade brush on this model. I've gone for a, a finer point, still a cheap Citadel brush, but it has a finer point that's going to allow me to work my way around all the corners near this belt, around the badge. As you can see probably from this picture alone, he has a lot of gubbins. The knee pads, he's in also a quite a uh, straight up pose which means there's this very thin gap between his knee pad and his boots that I just want to be careful on any bleed here is going to be pretty annoying to clean up so I just want to get it right the first time so I'm going to be a bit more patient than I normally am and just take my time as I'm putting this paint on it's absolutely no rush so while I'm doing that, let's have a, a proper look at the tech judges. So they run, upgrade and maintain all aspects of a judge's equipment. They are the inventors of most of the judge weapons and armor, and they build all mechanical gadgets and vehicles that the judges use. They can also be responsible for armor maintenance whenever a judge returns from a mission with bullets lodged in their armor. So yeah, they... Uh, there's always a squad in every sector house. They look after forensics. They deal with any of the mech units. They repair armor vehicles. They're pretty much well spread out throughout the Justice Department. The head of their department, which I'm not sure who it is currently in the current timeline, but they usually have a representative on the Council of Five. They are a pretty strong wing within the justice system. In game, you can either have a rookie tech judge or just a normal judge that is a tech judge, which means they're not going to have over the top killer stats. If you join me in the follow up video, which will hopefully be dropped the day after this one, if you try and find it, we're going to make a 50 point Justice Department tech group. And it's a pretty small group. It's going to be this guy as a judge. We'll have a rookie tech judge, and then we'll also have one of the auxiliary robots, the Mark. I forget what it is. Hang on, I got notes here somewhere. Let me just find them. It is the mechanic. I can never say it, mechanicizo Mark Two A, which is basically the model you get in the kit. It's not the model you get in the main rulebook, annoyingly. That is the Mark I that famously went a bit crazy and killed off people and Dredd tried to bury the program. These are the newer robots. They are a lot sleeker. I don't know why Warlord Games 
decided not to build the Mark 1. Instead, they built the Mark 2 and didn't put the rules in the rulebook. It's very confusing. Maybe if someone from Warlord is watching this video, they can let us know. But as you can see, I've pretty much worked my way around the body, body now. The badge is done. I'm getting this arm done. So we can skip forward a little bit. With the blue drying, I decide to work on the small amount of flesh you can see, which is his chin. I am using the Army Painter Dark Wood. Just finding I enjoy that colour on my models. Gives them this nice dark warmth. It's a colour that you're not going to see much in a dread paint scheme as it is. As they rely on these brighter, brighter colours. So I find it helps make the model seem a lot more unique. And then swiftly moving on, we can hit it up with the orc skin. So this is going to be used on the belt, the boots, the knee pads, elbow pads, anything that should be green. It's an absolutely lovely colour. I think it suits the judges perfectly. It's very hard to know with the different artists and different colorists that have worked on the comic over the years. You get some people that want to paint the judges uniforms black, others like myself do them blue. The greens can vary, some people go for a proper dark military green, others go bright and bold like I do. Some go into the lime green spectrum as well. And that's what I love, you can pretty much pick an artist that you enjoy. And just copy their style and the way they go about it. For me, I am an 80s, early 90s Judge Dread fan, so I always go for a dark blue. It's the way I imagine them looking. And then the SJS can be black. But I know a few people are a fan of the black uniforms, which was done by the Strontium dog artist Carlos. He always favoured doing his judges in the all-black uniform. But I find if you can separate the street judges from the SJS, it looks a lot more stylish and fitting for me. But that is just my version of the Dread World. Everybody can do whatever they want. This is, after all, based on a comic. So you pick what makes you happy. We then have another quick step, which is the runic grey. I'm just using this for his controller in his hand. I'm not sure if this is a scanning device, if it controls a mech, if it's something completely different. It might just be a walkie-talkie. Who knows? It's the tech department. Quickly blob it on. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to quickly say hey, remember to like, comment, subscribe and all that good stuff, it really does help me out. And if you're new to Judge Dread, welcome to the channel. I try to produce as much Judge Dread content as I can, as there isn't much out there at the moment, so I'm trying my best to get people going. I have a series known as The Rookie's Guide 2, and I'm trying to go through the rule book, explain rules. We're reaching a point where we should be able to have a battle report soon. So make sure you tune into that and give it a like. Otherwise, this is Adventures with Peps. Cheers for watching along. Here we go, Zealot Yellow. This is the main colour. Well, I say main colour. It's probably the third main colour. Blue, green and yellow. That's what the judges are. And this is going to be used on his belt buckle, the chain and his badge, shoulder pads, and then his helmet. Now the thing that I find interesting with the tech judges is their name badge. All street judges, as far as I can tell, have their actual name written on their badge. So Dread has Dread written on his, Anderson, Anderson. Tech, for some reason, and I'm not sure if it's the same with the med judges. I'll have to have a look when I'm getting ready to do that model. They just weirdly have tech written on their badge. It's like they they don't get to have their own name. They have to be just tech. 
which is quite comical. Obviously, in the follow-up video to this one on creating the gang, you're going to learn their names that I'm going to call them in-game. And I'll try and do a little description on each person's personality. Each person's personality? Is that even a thing? Who knows? But I really like the, the model. The model itself is a joy to paint. It's got a lot of detail that this speed paint loves to grab onto. Not entirely sure my camera work and light and helps show it off as well as it could. But as you can see, it just really picks those shadows up nicely. And the helmet on this is very unique. I might have to pick up another kit and transplant the head off this one onto a judge with a sniper rifle because it gives me sniper sniper vibes for some reason. Really am enjoying these models by Warlord Games. They've done a good job with them. All right, Blood Red is up now. And with this is once again another quick job. I'm going to use it on his eye lenses and the cabling from whatever that handheld device is. So let's just get that done first. Very quick. I ain't wasting time here. It's a, on a grey undercoat, so it's going to come out a nice dark red. Just want to make sure i got good coverage on it. Make sure I haven't missed anything. There we go. And like, I don't care what people say, this is pretty much tabletop ready now. you got enough colours on it. It looks good from a distance. If anybody complains about it, send them my way and I'll explain to them the hobby is about having fun. Don't go overboard. This channel is all about getting paint on models and playing games. And there you go. We'll let this dry up and we'll take some other videos. But that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. If you did, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Let me know what you want to see next. And if there's any rules you want me to go over in the Rookie's Guide, let me know as well. Until then, cheers for watching. Make sure you look at the community page. And if you're really bored, watch one of these videos. Bye bye